Beef Lobart here, and 1.7 is upon us. The global event is over, the farm fest is done, but what has this done for my tactician build? Okay, let's take a look. Now, I'm running the MDR primarily because whenever you run the MDR, you get distracted. I get distracted quite a bit, but all right. What this does for you is when, okay, your damage is increased by 18% to targets with status effects. Now, whenever you apply bleed or burn or whatever to them, you're gonna get that 18% increase in damage, which comes in quite handy. So the MTR is the perfect light sniper even though it's considered to be an assault rifle I use it as a light sniper and as you see I have 121% magazine I've got stability headshot critical hit these are the mods that I'm running on it I'm sure they could be better but the whole point of it is is the scope itself is the CQB SS running the 12x and 15x scope on here is pretty much worthless and this isn't much better but this is about as high a magnification scope you want to run to be able to get the damage because you're going to get way too much sway and you'll see if you you try it now i would recommend probably changing out that scope over to the 79 where you get a higher critical hit chance but this is what I'm running, like it or not. I'm running a bullfrog. However, a lot of times I'll actually switch back over to a lightweight M4 just because of the DPS on it. But moving on to the gear itself. Currently, right now, what I'm running is still the Barrett's chest piece, rolled for electronics, and with 9% skill haste. On, as you can see, I am running a ninja backpack. And for those who don't know what it is, now this is also rolled for 1269 electronics and skill power. But what it does is it acts like a wild card. It will give you a plus one to your gear set. So if you're running, we'll say a D3, the Ninja backpack is going to act as if it's another piece of a regular gear set. Not classified, but a regular gear set. And say if I put on this backpack here instead it's not going to work but if I put on the D3 vest I'll then get the plus 15% protection from elites now on tacticians I'm running three pieces of tacticians here so that I can run the backpack and I can run the Barrett's chest piece mm, I'll probably end up changing the, the Barrett's chest piece out later on but I've only got three pieces of tacticians on, so the Ninja back Bike Messenger Bag is going to act as if I'm wearing a fourth piece. Is it necessarily um, a good thing? Eh, maybe, maybe not. But the whole point is, here is what I'm wearing. It's 9309. It's a little bit lower on my electronics from what I'm used to running. Usually running in the, the mid 9400 range. And there's some possibility that I could tweak it up a little bit to get, get even higher, get closer to that magic 10,000 number. The whole reason why I like the tacticians build is simply because when you're on the range, and here's where FAMAS, FAMAS or Bullfrog comes in handy. Did not get any numbers. And for some reason, the target range is not stacking tacticians anymore. I don't know if they did that to try and prevent you from stacking it here and then going into a mission, then automatically having that full stack of 30 built up. But it's kind of annoying. So what I'll do is I'll just pop over here. And let's try that again. 
building of the tactician stack is going to give you increase in your skill power. And uh, screw it, I'll go ahead and make it hard mode. Because, you know, this is difficult. We've got a lot of so hostiles inside. My base right now is 378,000 skill power. We need those personnel back at the base so we can get the medical wing. Could it be better? There are ways of making it better. There's always improvements. But the whole point is I'll chuck them over here. And let's see how well these idiots will stack up for me. So I'm not even going to pay attention to them. We're going to look at it dropped down to 346. I don't know why. But as soon as I deployed it, my skill power went down. But as it's shooting, it's actually building up my tactician's points for me. And you can see I'm at 435 right now. Four sixty. I want to get that magic number of thirty on the uh, twenty-six. I'm actually going to move out of the way, so hopefully the idiot that's camping upstairs will actually come down more and get shot. Let's see, we're at 26. My turret just popped, so we'll take a look at it from here. With 26 points on Tactician, brings my skill power to 460,000. Okay, so you got that big, huge number. What are you going to do with it? Well... Security system, I might right, be able to find so Now that I'm stacked fully at 30, sitting at 472 on my skill power. I'll continue to make adjustments so I can try to hit that magic 500,000. Not that it matters all Let's that see what much. I can find. But now that can I've got it stacked. TV feed? Looks like Candle and her okay. staff are being mm -hmm. forced to treat care. their wounded. Oh. That's the only reason they're still alive. You know, actually, there's probably a way you can. Get it looks rid like of got hearing Fay Lau's bullshit every time you try and do to do anything. There's a lot of these guys, but if you use she cover, you should be able to pick up. them off without making yourself a target. All right, so to expend that, we'll drop this out and we'll look at the damage rating. 113 bleeds of 56,000 on average. Additional hostiles yeah. detected. This helps to make the lazy man build even more lazy. Pretty much, you can complete just about any mission on hard mode for sure with just a, that turret. And the reason why I use that turret instead of a flame is because of that. It's building my tactician's points. I can sit there and let the turret do a lot of my killing. And whenever it stacks up high enough, or I've got enough targets on the ground or whatever, I can go a seeker out. No. The Seeker, as you can see, is capping out on explosion damage. It says 92,000. I'm actually getting higher. I'm getting 113, 115,000 range on it. Uh, the bleed effect is where you get a whole lot of extra damage on top of that. Uh, the air burst, 85,000 cap. Why would you want to use... Uh, an air burst and only get 85 to the best I'm seeing is 99,000. It's just not worth the effort to, to use the air burst anymore whenever you use the cluster. It's going to have its normal burst damage. This is with no tacticians. 
140. 102,000. 76,000. Down to 63,000. So, as you see, the, especially in PvE, running this setup right here, high tacticians using that turret, using this one right here, the active sensor. Um, who gives a shit about the pulsing effect? It, it does slightly help, but you're talking about the base damage of being 10-9, just under 11,000. It's not bad. I'm going to work on trying to get higher numbers on turret damage. I've got some 4% um, mods that I need to bring over from another character, just so I get all of the good turret mods on this character, since this is my tactician build. Um, you know, going to the flame turret, you're going to get higher number here, but this is actually going to build up your tactician's authority points, and it's going to give you the higher overall damage. Is it completely necessary? Eh, maybe, maybe not. But this is what works for me. And Seeker Mine using the cluster, like I said, you look at the base cluster and you're just not going to see that kind of damage. The airburst is back down to 70,000. And this is at 76,000. Um, that's kind of a no brainer on that. So, you know. This configuration of how I'm running is actually going to give me the absolute most efficient method of being a lazy bastard. Literally, you can ac accomplish just about any mission only using the Seeker and Turret. Just hide behind cover and spam Seekers. Word is that they've really trashed the place. It would have broken I'm my sure dad's heart to see it go to hell like this. be some crying about we it used to watch and games get there nerfed together. and, you know... Oh my god, you must nerf everything. Nerf fun. You can't have fun anymore. I think it's better anymore. my folks didn't live to see any of this. But right. then so I think about, about all the people the doing their best to keep going. Tactician build. That's who we do this for, Agent. Go get them. Settings. Audio. Dialogue vo volume. Control the volume dialogue between characters. Well, we're going to try and see if this does anything to shut up Fei Lao, Jessica Kendall... Uh, God, Paul Rhodes and Roy Benitez and yeah, let's see if that works. If not, then we'll turn this back up and we'll try to figure out something else. I am so sick of hearing them yammering on the whole time whenever I'm trying to record or trying to play, especially if you're farming the same mission over and over and over and over and over, like a global event, which is thankfully over. But the prime example is this. Deploy a turret, stay hidden. And it just wrecks. If anybody knows what you can do to actually get more turret damage besides using the mods, please feel free to let me know. this entire section on all I've done is just don't turn it out. Always got one little douchebag that wants to complicate things. Seriously? So he had a status effect on him, so I ended up getting more damage. So as you see, the um, status effect in the MDR, the MDR is the perfect rifle for a tactician's build. Whenever you're, you're just putting everything into electronics and skill power, you're not going to have any firearms DPS whatsoever. So, it is absolutely the best weapon you could possibly use to give you any kind of power. Oh, poor weirdo shingies.
Whatever, you don't have any kind of status effects. It can do a lot less damage, but there's always things like there's a fire extinguisher right there. You can just get a status effect. Gas cans laying around, propane tanks, anything that causes them to be burning or dazed or whatever is going to give you that status effect. And with that status effect, it's going to give you that 80%, 18% damage increase. So yeah, I mean, if you can get your hands on one, the Urban MDR is the absolute best overall because of that one item, that one buff that it gets. Uh, the FAMAS, is it the best? Mm, I'm sorry, it's a FAMAS. Calling it the Bullfrog. Eh, whatever. There is no other FAMAS in the game. They've taken a, an entire weapon platform and made it an exotic only. There is no non-exotic version of the FAMAS in the game. That's fair enough, especially whenever you're, you're solo. When you get into a team, yeah, not as much. Oh, you're going to be a pain in my ass, aren't you? Guess what? I'm going to be a pain in your ass. And even blind fire, it'll work. But Actually, building tactician point. I had. Guess what? You should probably deal with that turret. You should probably deal with that turret. You're not dealing with it. Yeah, this works. You know, this was not a particularly challenging mission, but you've seen some of the other missions that I've run, and it's very similar to what I had before. So I'm going to keep working on improving the numbers overall, and um, by adding in a single classified gear piece, I chose to use the holster. Now. Final measure, okay, that's what I had at the time, but it gives me 25% exotic damage resilience. It was a nice little touch. Because I'm running the ninja bike, uh, ninja bike, the fucking ninja backpack, you know what the hell I'm talking about. But because I chose the holster, it's going to give me the higher numbers on firearms, stamina, and electronics. The minimum number you're going to get is 1273, which is one number above the maximum of a normal. If you've got a really well-rolled normal item, the highest you're going to get is 1272. So on these, the lowest you're going to get is 1273. The highest you're going to get is 1401. So by running a classified holster, you're going to have higher base numbers across the board, which are going to help get your firearms up, your stamina up, because you're already trying to spec into skill power. So to be able to run this and get any additional benefits whatsoever is why I chose to run the Ninja backpack and allow me to run a classified gear piece so I can get this. I can get a little bit more firearms and stamina because being totally squishy kind of sucks, especially when you get into a group. You feel kind of worthless even though your Seekers are doing some, some damage, your MDR is doing some damage now, and your turret is definitely doing some damage. You are useful in a group, but when you're running solo, this is the ultimate lazy-ass farm build, is running a high tactician's build with high seeker and turret damage. Um, I would probably stack mods towards um, seeker mine damage, if that's what your, your thing is, but I'm going to be doing more towards turret damage. Turret duration is nice, but turret damage is going to not only stack your your overall points for your tactician's perk, but you know, really and truly, it, it, the turret itself does a shitload of damage. 
So I'm actually going to look more into a full turret build, do whatever it takes to get the highest overall turret damage that I can get. And that's going to include getting all the 4% the, the uh, turret mods and the like. So hopefully you found this a little bit interesting. I've kind of babbled on. It's early in the morning. Well, I say early in the morning. It's 9.30. I uh, haven't had near enough coffee. So I'm going to get to work trying to figure out some, some new toys, new things, and new ways. So hopefully you like the uh, Tactician's build. If you've got any comments, please put them in here. Um, if you have any suggestions on how to make it better, please, please let me know. But for now, this is my perfect setup for solo farming as a lazy fat ass. Works for me. Hopefully it'll work for you. Thanks for watching.